Okie dokie, <coughs> we are live. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Winter has revisited Oklahoma. But they took the they took the hard freeze out of the forecast. Thank goodness. Did you hear that, Tom? They took the hard freeze out of the good. One panel. Forecast. <laughs> good morning, Eileen. Good morning, hugs to you. Okay, we're reading in Joshua chapter 21. All the way through chapter 22, verse 20 today. So, <clears throat> a lot of interesting things in today's reading. I made lots of notes. I'm just saying, though, that mine is not nice and neat and little teeny tiny. <laughs> like I used a ruler. <coughs> I only wish I could write so nice and neat like Debbie does. I, I love seeing it. It blesses my heart. To see how nice and neat she is. It's amazing. Donna loves it too. <laughs> and Donna never does write like that. Yes. I surround myself with great, great, great women. I'm telling you. You know, lots of training. I've been to says you are the sum total of the top five people you spend time with. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'm in real good company myself. Hi, Karen. How are you this morning? There's Debbie and another Debbie. Good to see you girls this morning. Good to see you guys that's on here with us too. Okay, so they've conquered the land. They went back over to conquer the land, reconquer the land on the west side of the Jordan. They went to help their brothers. We get to see the end of the Passover. In today's reading, just so many things. Um, and then as the wars were ending, and as Joshua was, was sending them back out, sending them back home, um, now was the time. Let, let's look in uh, chapter 20, verse... Let me see if I can see those little bitty teeny tiny numbers on this page. <laughs> 43. <laughs> I have perfect eyesight. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land he had sworn to give their, their, to their ancestors. And they took possession of it and settled there. So the promise has finally been completely and totally fulfilled. They have the land, but they have to possess it. They have to possess it. And here in this promised land, well, let me just read on and then I'll talk. And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had solemnly promised their ancestors. And God gave them rest. What was the source of their rest? God. God gave them rest. <clears throat> None of their enemies could stand against them, for the Lord helped them conquer all their enemies. Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. Mm -hmm. I could stop right there in today's reading. <clears throat> that right there is enough to sustain us for the rest of our life. Mm -hmm. That right there. I mean, I've got numbers of things that this spoke to me this morning. So I gave him the land, which in my mind is the promise. But they had to take possession of it. See, there's always a part on our side. There's always a part on our side. Why? Why, Why did God put all of the principles and laws and everything that makes the earth tilt on its axis and the sun shine in its place why 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 did he make it so that there is an action on our part the best explanation i've ever been given that i can ever remember is he didn't want robots 
You know, I went through a, a, a troubled marriage. I went through a, a troubled time with who was supposed to be my mate for the rest of my life. <clears throat> and I've shared with you guys that I didn't, I didn't turn to God during those troubled times. But do you know, I literally can remember saying at one time in my life, I don't want you to love me because you have to. I don't want you to be here because you feel obligated to be here. I want you to want to love me. I want you to want to be here. And so maybe that's why this explanation means so much to me. God didn't want us to be obligated to love him. He didn't want us to be little puppets on a string that, oh, I'll pull this string today and you'll say, I love you, God. And I'll pull this string today and I'll say, I love you, Jesus. And I'll pull this string here and you'll obey what I just told you to do. Well, here, you know, I want you to go. I send you out. And and I, as God, will pull the, the puppet strings back and forth, back and forth, so that it looks as though you're obeying me. There's always an action on our part. And for the Israelites, their action, man, it was tough on them. And he was tough on them, wasn't he? Possess the land. Possess the land. Possess the promise I've given you. They had to possess it. You know what? In today's reading, not all of them chose to do that. Mm -hmm. Some of them went back. Some of them went back. And isn't it interesting what they did on their way back? On the way back, they created a different altar. Mm -hmm. And so just at the time that everything looks so good. You, you, know, you know, inside of this land, God had provided the provision for everything they needed. Everything they needed, God had provided for. I, they wanted for nothing in the promised land. And then here some of them go, going to cross back over to the west side of the Jordan. But, oh, by the way, before we leave the east side, let's build this altar. And the response of God's people who chose to possess the land, as they were instructed to do, had to load up once more, had to get their arms ready, their arrows ready, their, their weapons ready to come and fight one more time because an enemy was set in camp, was creating a false all, all altar, was creating an altar for idols inside of their promised land, and they were having no part of it. Mm. Mm. The Lord gave them rest, and yet some chose to go back. Failure to possess was not because God didn't give them the provision for the rest. Their failure to possess, their failure and, and desire to go back. How many of us keep going back? Mm -hmm. Keep going back to that same hurt. Well, you know, because this happened to me, I'm going to hurt you before you can hurt me. Well, because, you know, of course I act this way. Have you seen my mom and dad? Or have you... Did you not know what they did to me? Did you did you not understand that when that accident happened? Did you not understand that when this disease comes? Did you not understand? All of those are phrases of going back. Well, 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 you know, I used to, back in the good old days. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I'm, uh, my nugget is right here. I'm going to read it to you again. Hmm. So the Lord gave to Elizabeth all that he had promised to give her, and she took possession of it and settled there. And the Lord gave Elizabeth rest on every side, just as he had solemnly promised her ancestors. None of her enemies could stand against her, for the Lord helped her conquer all her enemies. Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to Elizabeth was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. Mm. 
Put your name in there. Put your name in there. Provision has been made. God's already done everything God's going to do. Look out your window this morning. If it's raining, praise God for the rain that nourishes this land, this earth. If it's cold, praise God for the ecosystem that it's completing on our behalf. If it's snowing, praise God, not only is it fulfilling what it's supposed to do in our land, but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at the green leaves that provides oxygen for us. Look at the little flowers that's, that's coming up in this new spring that is the evidence and the reminder of the seeds we've planted in our life finally coming to fruition. Mm. <laughs> Move on to chapter 22. So Joshua now is sending them out. Um, for seven years, they've been faithful to Joshua as of this reading. For seven years, they've obeyed what Joshua, what God has told them through Joshua to do. <clears throat> They fought for their brothers. They didn't just fight for themselves, but they fought for their brothers. And, and then there's three things in this reading that Joshua told them to do. And I want you to pay special attention to the order in which he told them to do it. Joshua told them to hear God. This is in his blessing when he blessed them. Isn't it something that Joshua wouldn't send them out without blessing them? Isn't that something? I've had people ask me, what purpose does it serve to ask a blessing over your food when you eat? Why, why do you do that? That's just a religious ritual. Well, you know what? Unfortunately, that is exactly what it becomes oftentimes. But see, here's my example for me to pray for anyone I love as they're getting ready to make a trip. Catherine's getting ready to fly back to Colorado today and... I want to pray blessings over her before she goes, just as Joshua gave blessings to them. But if you really dig in and you really look at it, he told them first to hear God. This is going to sound very familiar. And then he says, give God your love. And then he told them to obey God. Now, there's a divine order in all things. And when we get outside of divine order, we, we create havoc for ourselves. We create chaos. And our God is not a God of chaos. Our God is not a God that gets out of order. When he tells us something in a specific order, it's because he means it to be in a specific order. Because hmm, loving without hearing or obeying before loving would have been considered heresy back here in this day. I'll repeat that. Loving without hearing or obeying before loving would have been out of divine order. Our theme for the weekend was loved. And every single person that came walked away with a brand new revelation of just what that means. Loved. Pray. Listen. Read. And then everything else below that is the obey. And it's all because he loved us first. Which opens the door for us to love him. And that's an endless circle that never has a beginning nor an end. It always, always begins and ends with love. Always. Joshua wouldn't send them out without a blessing. Can't read my own writing. When we obey God, we are, mm, yeah, I guess I wasn't supposed to say it to. Oh, when we obey God, we are gainers, not losers. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't read my own writing, Tanya. <laughs> when 
we obey God, we are gainers and not losers. Luke chapter 20, verses 1 through 26. <clears throat> this is where these old Pharisees and Sadducees was trying to trip him up. Trying to trip him up, and he talked to him in parables. <laughs> but even though he talked to him in parables, they knew he was talking about them. So they set out to trick him. Verse 20. Oh, goodness. My eyes are doing wonderful this morning. Verse 23. Luke 20, 23. He saw through their trickery. Another nugget for me. Another nugget. First and foremost, it is he sees through my trickery. He sees those times when you know, maybe I stop praying a little bit because my actions and my attitude hasn't really been one that I'm really wanting to highlight to God right now. So I just won't pray. He sees through my trickery. He sees through my trickery when, you know, I'm really wanting to buy that new dress. And Thomas told me it's not really a, a good time to buy that new dress. And so, you know, maybe if I just find another reason that I can give him. Well, you know, Tom, we've got a conference this weekend. And so, you know, that new dress would really look nice. And I've got to give such a professional appearance, you know, when I go before the people there and he sees through my trickery. He sees the hundred dollar bill I, ke I keep hidden, you know, in a special little compartment in my wallet because I don't want my husband to see. He sees through my trickery when, you know, I go and buy some extra tackle for my fishing pole and I just leave it out in the garage. He sees through my trickery. But you know what for me is even more powerful than that? I, I yearn for and I long for and I welcome the correction from my father. I tell him on a regular basis, if there's anything in me that's not of you, please take it out. Please take it out. Continue to change me. Please, Lord, don't leave me as I am. And I mean it. He saw through their trickery. I don't have to worry about what they're saying about me. I don't have to come back and answer someone on Facebook because they attack me. I don't have to worry and get all upset because... A business deal fell through that I really thought was what was supposed to happen because he sees through their trickery. He sees through the trickery of the enemy. All of the wiles and the way. See, I don't have to get too caught up about this enemy that's out there. In fact, I am not to focus on the enemy. I am not to be ignorant. My people perish for lack of knowledge. But I am not the one that has to see through the trickery. God sees through the trickery, and I seek God. And I allow the Holy Spirit in the moment to show me what to say, what to do, what not to say, what not to do, how to avoid the tricks of the enemy. Today was full of some really good nuggets. Really, really good nuggets. And then in my column... I, I, I wrote a little text that happened last year about how somebody who follows our Bible study sent a special little gift in <laughs> and blessed this, this ministry so that we can continue on doing these. And I wrote a little note in here about how that touched my heart to open up the mail on this day a year ago. And to have that little gift with little words of encouragement. Just, just a tiny little paragraph of encouragement. Who can you encourage today? Mm -hmm. Who can you encourage today? Who is it that needs your words of life today? Who can you speak life to? You know what I did when I reread that this morning? It re-energized me one more time. One more time. That's why I wrote it down. Hmm. Hmm. 
Psalms is good, but I'm going to go to the Proverbs 13, 15 through 16. I know that makes Debbie just a little uneasy that I skipped <laughs> over a few. And I love that woman. I'm, she knows I love her. <laughs> Proverbs 13, 15 through 16. A person with good sense is respected. A treacherous person is headed for destruction. And then here it is, another nugget. Wise people think before they act. Fools don't. And they even brag about their foolishness. They even brag about their foolishness. Catherine and I was talking about how we get so comfortable sometimes that some things become almost like a novelty. It's a, it's a fad or it's a phase. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But let, let's just use the example of the fear of snakes. Do we really think God wants us to live a life of being petrified about snakes? Mm -hmm. Or does he want to set us free from that? Mm -hmm. And yet you can talk to some people and they want to tell you stories about this snake, about how they were scared about this snake. My goodness, they put videos on. I know you guys have seen them. A video, there's one video in particular that the camera is going alongside the house and, and you're going real slow and real slow and, and you turn the corner and this great big huge snake reaches up to, to, to bite you in the video and you jump. <laughs> Does God really want us to hang on to our fears? Mm -hmm. I mean, we just read about how not to go back. And, and, and Catherine and I was talking about how some people, they don't even know they're doing it, but it was... Oh, yeah, there was this time that this snake and, you know, by golly, oh, no, not me. I'm up on the, I'm on the table. I'm on the rooftop. I, you're, I'm not getting anywhere near those. And, and they love the attention they're getting because of their fear. And they don't even know what they're saying. They don't even know what they're saying. And I'm just using that as an example because it's an easy example. Nothing I'm saying is to speak words of condemnation. I'm speaking words of freedom that you don't have to be so afraid that what you view as an enemy is going to reach up and smack and bite you and you're going to die. You've got power and authority over that. Do we have a caution? Fear is an emotion that was created by God for our personal safety. We should have a healthy level of fear of a poisonous snake in that we are not going to pick it up and be stupid with that. But we should not have such a fear that we're paralyzed and we sit there and let him bite us either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put, your, put your own word in whatever it is. It, I used a snake because it's a common thing. But it could be your fear of rejection. It could be your fear of love. I'm not going to let anybody love me because I've been hurt. It could be your fear of stepping out into the ministry that God's told you to do. It could be your fear of telling somebody about Jesus mm -hmm. because they might think you're a Jesus freak. Oh, heaven forbid that they think you're sold out for Jesus. <laughs> we are. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Back to my song, Proverbs. Wise people think before they act. Fools don't. And they even brag about their foolishness. Oh, Lord, show me where I may do that. Open my eyes to it. Anything that's in me that's not of you, please, Lord, get it out. Get it out in Jesus' name. So this is a terrific Tuesday. Tom and I will be traveling to a conference in Kansas City over the next three days. And beautiful Debbie will be bringing you guys the word. And it'll be rich and it'll be full. And she'll do her research. I, I would almost venture to guess she's already been studying. When, when she did Bible study for me at the re retreat, she had taken the whole week before and had studied in advance mm -hmm. so that she's got those nuggets to give you. She she digs and she researches. And, and Debbie is one of my longest standing best friends in the whole world, and I love her unconditionally. And so I never want anybody to misunderstand because she's not here beside me. If you guys watched us over the weekend, we had fun <laughs> together. And I'm just continuing that on. 
because they're, the last thing on this earth I would ever do is disrespect my friend Debbie because I have nothing but the utmost respect for my friend Debbie and the way her brain works. I'm in awe of it because mine doesn't work that way. And together, we're better. Love you guys.